Everyone wants to wear Carhartt till it's time to do Carhartt shit. Exactly. You, know? <laughs> you gotta actually work. Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg podcast. Today we're here with Jeremy Dean, super talented designer that does all this cool Grateful Dead, Black Flag stuff, and some stuff for John Mayer and whatnot. And how you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, on. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, not bad. Just I usually try to not do these things till like around this time. So I'm not super tired right when I wake up, you know? Yeah, that's smart, smart decision. Yeah, I, I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't be uh, I'm, I, I'm not functional till about, you know, one or two in the afternoon. Right. Actually, anyway. I feel like I, I can yeah. function, but I'm not good at, you know, talking to other people like I could do my no, own stuff. No, no, but... no. I, I, I try not to take any phone calls before noon. Mm-hmm. That's my goal. Um, if I have to, I have to, but in general, yeah, yeah. I tend to, uh, tend not do for it. sure. When, when, uh, I had a yeah. still was working like as an employee when COVID first happened and we had those zoom calls, I'd pretty much like just get out of bed at like nine twenty five for the nine thirty call and just be on there. Like <laughs> looking like a, a mess and I wouldn't even turn on my camera half the time. Cause it was not good. That's funny. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, I know that feeling. What have you yeah. uh, kind of been working on this week? What you been up to? Uh, I'm trying to get another season of, <clears throat> excuse me, of um, our, or actually more than a season, probably you know, get squared away for at least half the year mm-hmm. for uh, Play Dead, which is my, you know, sort of one of my things that I do that's part of a, uh, you know, Grateful Dead licensing business. Yeah. Uh, with my partner, Mason Warner, who runs the uh, Instagram from the lot. Mm. And then we are partners in a screen printing business uh, called, that we've just renamed. And it used to be called Pink Sinks, and now it's called uh, Studio 7. Okay. Um, so we've kind of like rebranded it, we're kind of readjusted. There's some new people in the mix. Um, so yeah, that's been my, that's my big big focus this week is a little bit of that uh and a little bit of the of the new studio stuff too right. we want to have a couple of things to offer uh with that new studio as well cool. so, yeah looking at your stuff yeah. it's like there's so many diff- it seems like you have so many different little like avenues and like studios and businesses going on <laughs> at the same time it's hard to like know what's what i i, I think i have to stop it um no, this, I, you know there's yeah there, it just sort of seems to build so we have Play Dead, which is, yeah, Grateful Dead licensing. I have my own thing, which is just fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have my own other thing that's just freelance for other bands and brands and stuff like that. And then um, the screen printing studio and then House 33, which is on again, off again, right. like w- when we have time. Right. And then the, uh, is the, do you, is the lot of the stuff that you mainly do for the like, um, W O B F stuff. Does that take up a lot of your time? Mm-hmm. No, that's fun. Like that's my fun stuff. Oh, okay. That's like when I'm, when I have like a creative block and I want to experiment with whatever I've been thinking about design wise. Mm-hmm. And I know I can't do it for somebody else. Right. I do that for me. It's more art based. So that kind of, yeah. Like I just do it because I know, like I, like I'll get my, like recently, and I was just explaining this to, to, to actually to Mason this morning, we were talking and I just said past month, I've just been it just major creative block, mm-hmm. like major. And I'm just like, I'm doing everything I can to kind of avoid sitting in front of the computer right. I've been reorganizing my office. I've been, you know, I was painting bedrooms in my house. Mm-hmm. I was doing like everything other than, um, even though I was, I had to like a design right. stuff, but everything was taking 10 times longer than what it normally so that... took. Um, and in those, in those situations, I just kind of, I realized I have to a get away from the computer and just draw mm-hmm. and then, you know, B do some stuff that's just for me. And design, screw up, look at it, hate it, get to a point where I like it. Mm-hmm. And then I, uh, at that point, maybe I'll get out of my right. thing, you know, whatever that is, you know, block, 
funk, mm-hmm. you know. It's so, good though because I, so, I feel like when I do that stuff too, like my own stuff, when I want to just, you know, explore and experiment and like not have to, you know, basically listen to anybody or whatever, I feel like it's cool when you put that stuff out there because then you're more likely to have people approach you like wanting that kind of stuff and then you just get to do more of it. Absolutely. And that was my whole thing. Like when I started to actually put certain things, design work out on Instagram, Mm -hmm. you know, I just, I thought at that point I was still, I was doing freelance work, but I was working, you know, as a, as an art director, creative director in an office I had for big free years. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of frustration at, I guess, uh, yeah, it's frustration. Right. Like you're not doing exactly what you want to do and you aren't always, but you know, so I, I just started to like, just do whatever I wanted, (laughs) which I, but, but you know, like some people faced with doing whatever they want faced with that possibility, they completely shut down. It's almost like too Mm open-ended, right? You're just like, what do you, what do you mean? I can do whatever. I yeah. Want, when the client says right? like, like just go mean? crazy. You're like, all right. <laughs> I, that's a whole other yeah. story. And I get that sometimes from people. And then when I do go crazy, they go, well, yeah, yeah. I didn't say that. I didn't mean that crazy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Corporate. Crazy. But like, exactly. But like, you know, it, when you're faced with, you can do anything you want. There's been plenty of times when I'm just like, I completely freeze up and then you overanalyze mm-hmm. and you overthink it. And that gets you in even into a worse place. Right. So, but at that time that like when sort of Instagram kind of first started and I wasn't really using it as anything other than a, you know, a more of like a sharing tool rather than a design Mm -hmm. promotional thing. Cause it just, nobody was really thinking about it at that point. Right. uh, You know, I was just like, I have to do some self-initiated project right now, or I'm going to like, you know, I'm just going to like wither up (laughs) and, and die. And, you know, that's where just doing my own t-shirt, that's where doing these t-shirts and stuff like that came from because it was like, I was just bored to tears being a hand, like the hands for somebody else most of the time. And I knew that the path to get to do the stuff that I really wanted to do was do the self-initiated project. Don't care. Just put it out there into the world. Don't overanalyze Mm -hmm. it. And then people will see it. And if they like that, they will come to you and say, Hey, we like this. Can you do that for us? Right. And it worked. It worked (laughs) eventually. It took a while, but it worked. Yeah. I feel like that's how I, uh, I always like really stuck with me when my professors and stuff would say like, put the work in your portfolio that you want to be doing. Like if your whole portfolio is logos, no one's going to hit you up to do their album art or whatever, you know, they're going to hit you up for logos. Absolutely. And like, I I do a lot of Mm t-shirts. I did a lot of album covers for a long time, pre social media and all that stuff. Um, but I, yeah, I do a lot of tour merch. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of t-shirts for, all kinds of people. And it's cool. Like I actually prefer, like, I really love the medium. I love it. Mm-hmm. Like it's a quick hit. You can, you know, y- you can create a whole bunch of assets and you can spin it 50 different ways all day, which is really a lot of fun. Yeah. It's sort of like designing a poster, but a little bit more nuanced. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, yeah, like the only way you're ever going to do what you really want to do is if you do it for yourself first and then, right. I sort of, I sort of took like, it was a little bit of the like artist philosophy of do like, do that one thing that you really like and just, just hammer it into the ground, mm-hmm. repeat, 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 repeat. So that's kind of what it Yeah. Did. And it worked. I mean, did, yeah. did you, uh, <laughs> what kind of attracted you to like want to design for bands and stuff in the first place, whether it be like your own stuff or your actual like first clients? I'm a frustrated wannabe musician, (laughs) but I have no musical talent and I'm definitely not going to sing for a band. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've always from like a very little kid been very super into music Mm -hmm. at all times. And, and, but I didn't know how to participate because as much as I, you know, I tried to play the 
an instrument in elementary school and the report card came back and said, give it up. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Like it was a night. They, they nicely said, no need to continue on with the saxophone, right. Jeremy. Um, and so it, as I got older and I was always into drawing, 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 I thought, well, this, you know, I'm looking at these album covers, like Kiss album covers and all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, I could kind of maybe do something like mm-hmm. that. And I love type and everything. So that's, you know, and then once I got into, once I got into hardcore, once I got into skateboarding, I, that was like, it was like, oh, wait, there are other kids essentially that are doing this stuff. Right. You know, people that I mean, people my age at 16, 17 years old, and they're kind of at least doing something. They're doing a zine, they're doing album covers for the friends' bands, mm-hmm. they're doing whatever it is. Um, and then that just sort of led me down that path. It helped that in the summers, I worked for. Uh, my my father had a little ad agency mm. and he had a, um, a printing company that was attached to that agency. So I used to work in the printing company on a folder, which was, you know, wrote little brochures and stuff would come off, get folded and then stack up and then you take them and pack them in boxes. Mm. And that's what I did during the day in the summer. And then I would wait for him to be done for the day, which was usually at like I'd be done at five. He'd be done at like six something. I'd go into the art, into the art department and I would pull out rub on letters and I'd, you know, do, I'd get clip art and I would photocopy things and I'd yeah. make them wavy on the photocopier and I'd use a stat camera and I would make films and then I would go home and I had these little hand built screen printing, um, things that I'd made, I just would do it with like my mom's ironing board, and, yeah. you know, and, it, and, it, and, it, and I was squeegee and I went to the lumber yard down the street, rode my skateboard down the street to the lumber yard and would build little, you know, screens and stuff That's and, just, and, and make, make films and do screen prints. So all that stuff, you sort of go like, Oh, like, okay. Like this is how I can participate and I, you know, and not be, in a band, but mm-hmm. I can help a band's visual identity. Now it took me, you know, my friends had a band when we were in high school and that was fun. Um, they kind of let me do essentially whatever I wanted. Yeah. Um, but it really wasn't until after I got out of school that I went like, okay, I really need to kind of meet some people mm-hmm. and put myself out there more. Cause I wasn't like, if I was going to shows, I, I wasn't like making sure like I talked to the band or what I wasn't like that aggressive right. about stuff. But I luckily kind of met up with some guys that, you know, ran a record label called Jade tree. And they were like, Oh wait, you're a designer. Oh wait, you want to do record covers? Great. You know, like let's, let's do that. Mm-hmm. So they, they really kind of helped me kind of achieve that goal right. in a big way, much, not much later, but later. It, you know, later on, later, later nineties, mm-hmm. um, and early two thousand. That's cool. You which had was access fun. to like, all was, that stuff too. Like, uh, with your dad's stuff, that's like a really was, fortunate kind of setup. Yeah. And what's hilarious is, is that he, like, he was, he didn't want me to be a designer at yeah. all. He was like, no, don't do this. And I'm like, I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> he was just like, please, no, please. Yeah. He's like, I deal with these guys all day long. One of his partners was the art director. Like there were, there were three, you know, his one partner in the business was this guy, Bob, who I would go into his office all the time and just to see like what he was doing. And he'd, he'd do all these tissue overlays and sketches. And I was just fascinated mm-hmm. by all that stuff. There was no way, like I didn't have any other choice. Right. Really. I, the way I looked at it. I mean, I wasn't good at anything else. <laughs> yeah. I, feel like... I don't even know if I'm good at this. I... Nah, I mean... <laughs> I'm still, still confused. I'm still confused. I feel like that's a, from talking to so many people, I've realized that like, you know, from different niches of design, different ages, different disciplines, all that, like it's, it's fortunate to hear like when you're younger, oh, it's cool that the older people or people that have been in this forever also like struggle with that feeling. But then it's also like, yeah. you think damn, I guess it never goes away. You know, like you're always going to have that. You know, I, I thought it would at one point and it just, 
it just doesn't, especially like lately, like the past month, like I said, like I was just struggling through, but, and I'm just like, I'm like, do I, should I be doing yeah. this? Like, you know, you really kind of start questioning yourself and I'm like, Oh no, no, no. Like just step back a second, right? regroup. And yeah. And that's helpful. What I did want to ask you though, about mm. kind of, cause obviously you have a lot of roots in like hardcore and punk and you're into that kind of DIY mm -hmm. culture, especially, you know, you properly like kind of lived in that time when that stuff started, but how is your approach different with like designing, you know, for something like that versus like the dead or like John Mayer, you know, you know, I don't know if it's so much different rather than like, I'm trying to think if I look at it and like, mm -hmm. I, because obviously it looks different, but I'm wondering if you have it, a different kind of, you know, mindset you're in when you're doing no. those two different things. I, you know, it's funny. I, I, I actually, I, I don't, I like, mm -hmm. I really approach everything no matter what it is very similarly. Okay. Um, because I feel like if I approach them differently, it's going to lose something mm. in a way like you know, right. does that make, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, I, I, I think mean, that makes sense because that means you you believe that like the reason you're qualified for this is your approach. Like you have confidence in kind of your process and things. I, yeah, like, it, it, you know, I guess, I mean, yeah, I guess. I, I feel like what I've done, sort of what I've built myself up to at this point. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, look, the reason I got my first job before I was even out of, before I was out of school is because of just sort of the way I, I approached everything the same way I kind of still do now, mm -hmm. which was, I have these lucid moments of, okay, don't think, overthink it. Don't think too hard. Just kind of go and kind of do it. Yeah. And that's what sort of got me on the path with the first job I had at school with some of my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what sort of got me just to kind of, you know, do my own fun thing that kind of turned into other things. Um, that's what kind of, I feel like when I was in art school, like I stopped, I was overthink, like I was overthinking it like crazy right. when I was in school and I was just like, losing my mind and i thought you know that was that was also the yeah. time when like that nice transition of in school was like they just gotten a you know they gotten a computer lab with a bunch of different macs they okay. were like that was sort of like during the what what era that was it was like the 2e and then there was a, a line called the centris hmm. at that time this is like 1991 right and and I thought, oh, if I once I learned how to use the computer, everything's going to be great, uh -huh. right? When I, used, when I started <laughs> using the computer, and I went, oh my god, yeah, I am. This is horrible, and I was like, so bummed out. Yeah. So I just decided, like, well, okay, I got to be able to use this for something. I got to be able to use it as a tool because because you, you immediately when you get on the computer, you think this is just going to design everything for me, and it's going to be awesome. And you're like, no, no, no. Yeah. That's not how it works, man. Um, cause everything before that, I was just photocopying things and I was, and it like, it felt good. As soon as I got right. on the computer, I was like, this doesn't feel good at all. And that's why I primarily and, and still tend to work in the computer, take it out of the computer and put it back in the computer just because it's kind of my workflow it, lately too. It, it, it feels, you know, I can, I can kind of, I can get like the desired effect. I can get a better line quality. I can get, you know, whatever it is, if I'm drawing it and scanning it and then bringing in it, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, that's the way, like, I've just, it's been a 30 plus year thing of how do I approach this? Right. So if I approach it any other way, I'm, you know, and then there are times when I try to approach things differently and I go, what am I doing? Yeah. That makes this sense. doesn't work. I feel like so. I've been getting more into like, 
yeah, that kind of not 100% analog, but kind of using mm-hmm. the computer as like the starting tool and printing things out and then doing some stuff, you know, more like in a haptic sense and then scanning it back in. Cause you sometimes you're, you're doing something in Photoshop and you're spending all this time trying to make it look like it was like printed or some shit. And you're like, you might as well just yeah. actually print it out, you know, instead yeah. of well, that's putting the a thing texture too. Like, on I, it. I also am just, there is a, a level of, I guess like it's not, what's it, 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 the opposite of computer savvy? Um, <laughs> there's like, <laughs> I'm not good at Photoshop, right? I know how okay. to use illustrator. I use Photoshop to manipulate some images once I've scanned them and do a couple other things. But in general, I work in illustrator and I use it as a tool as like my pasteboard and I layer things and, and, and in design too, for bigger things, especially if they're copy heavy. Right. But like, I'm not a Photoshop guy at all. Like, if I need to do something in Photoshop and like, if I want to do something in Photoshop, I'm literally on YouTube, like how to do this. And I'll watch yeah. the tutorial and I'll go step by step to figure it out. Right. But you know, I know plenty of people who, a lot of people who will build everything in for, they're very Photoshop heavy, which is awesome. I'm it. I'm just, I'm so, I'm just, I'm bad at it. I've never been good at right. it. There's part of me that's like, maybe I should take, you know, some classes to kind of get better at using like you certain don't need tools. to, you know, I, you know, I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, but the thing is too, like, but there'll be these scary instances where it's like, there's a photo and they're like, well, can you just like retouch that? I'm like, Whoa, you don't want me to do that. I don't want to retouch anything. No yeah. way. Like I know what needs to be done and I can give directions to retouchers because I've done <laughs> that it for my work before, but you, me doing that. No yeah. way. Well, it makes Never. sense because you kind of, um, from what you're saying with the, when you were in school and the computers, you started, uh, in this world where like, there was a good amount of time where doing stuff on the computer was just like objectively worse. Like it just didn't look good. You know, it took a long time to, before even I started for it to like, by the time I started, we at least had like uh, the CS like kind of sweet and shit, you know? So yeah, we were, it was easy. This was like, this was like illustrator 88 or something like that. It was called, it was like illustrator 88 and like Photoshop one. Yeah. It's all black and white, huh? Yeah, like it was, yeah, like, it, you know, uh, yeah, it was, but like I, once I learned and then like at one point I was using freehand cause I went to a job that like they only use freehand, which you probably don't mm. even know what freehand uh, yeah. is. I don't even know that. <laughs> freehand was like the, was like the illustrator competitor uh, okay. in a way. And like it actually, quarks, I, huh? For InDesign? Kind of, but there was no InDesign. I actually knew quark like down and backwards because i use yeah. quark all the time yeah quark was like quark express there was quark and page maker i use quark like crazy I, I learned i had a summer job with this guy who did um uh like notebook covers oh, okay. and he used quark express and and he was like do you know quark and i was like i'd use it like twice and i was yeah. like yeah i was like fuck I was like, That's what am I going to do? do it though sometimes. <laughs> just learn like later, you yeah. know? I just, yeah, like talk about fake it till you make it. Like I just sort of went like, uh-huh, totally cool. And I'm just like, oh my God. And I just, I just fumbled around in it and I figured it out. Um, Quark yeah. was not intuitive. It was like, it, now that I think, if I think about it in comparison to like InDesign, it was like Stone Age kind of stuff. It was pretty Yeah, I always crazy. hear people talk about it. I never, I like I've. I've seen the little icon. I've heard of it, but I've never, I know it was big in like editorial design and all that stuff. Like back when it was I in its did prime. Tons of record layouts in Quark, like, you know, late nineties, early two thousand. That's what, that was all the templates would come in Quark. So that's what I would, and oh, I had to shit. flow copy and stuff. So that's what I, you know, that's what I did. I used Quark for all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, you wouldn't use, you couldn't do multiple pages in illustrator then. Mm. And nor would I even today do and like do illustrator. Like if I'm doing mo- like heavy copy, I, right. you know, it's, it's in design. So but at the time back then it's work. It's interesting so. to see the discrepancy between like the different generations of like designers and stuff, because there's a lot of designers I know that are either in like around my age or even younger, like in early college, high school and things. A lot of them like 
only know how to use Photoshop. Like they don't even know how to use like Illustrator or InDesign or anything until they get to school. And then even in school, they're like, I hate this. I'm just going to use Photoshop for like everything. And they get away with it, you know? So I think it can go both ways with the foot with Photoshop. Like there's so much, there's a lot of freedom in Photoshop where it kind of can really foster a lot of creativity because in InDesign, like, because you can just start drawing and doing and making things and, and, you know, in, in, in any of the other programs, you kind of have to have a little bit of a plan. Right. Right. And, you know, and maybe you need to scan some things and bring some things in and you have to, but like, there's something about, fo- like you don't, cause you have to go for like with some, at least with me, like InDesign or Illustrator, you have to go with some stuff that if you're bringing anything from outside the computer, you go Photoshop to into those programs. Mm-hmm. Once you just kind of get something in the Photoshop, then people, you know, you can just kind of, if you know what you're doing, you just kind of go crazy. So there's like this nice, almost like painterly freedom that certain people have, sure. especially if they aren't like, if they didn't really sort of set out to be a designer and maybe they right. went to Digital school art or design is kind of blurred now, you know, it, exactly. And then like sometimes that, you know, what, what, what ends up happening is, is, is pretty incredible. Sometimes I feel like the people who maybe didn't set out to be designers mm-hmm. sometimes kind of ended up, end up making the best designers right it's harder to learn being like creative and like having this just sense of like composition and design in your brain it's harder to learn that than to like already know that and just learn how to you know use text boxes and indesign or whatever it may be it it, it, absolutely it's like you it's just sort of like a you know it's a you know photoshop can be like a blank more really the, the most blank piece of paper Mm-hmm. out of any of the programs so right. you know i think about that a lot like that some of the people who i know who are like some of the better graphic designers never really set out to be designers mm-hmm. and the and i mean there are plenty of people who are just like a, you know design obsessed and are great graphic designers right but there's almost there's something nice about people who kind of like maybe take themselves out of it a little bit. Yeah. And then, but kind of do it in sort of unknowingly mm-hmm. do something that's. Yeah. Cause they're not hindered cool. by like rules that someone implanted in their head. Like I, it take me a while to like, you know, like I'd always hear in my head, like my professor, like, you know, like don't ever justify your text or like shit like that. Like everything's like aligned to the left or like the grid. And like, I'm glad I know the rules to break them and things, but it really, for a while, like I I would do something that was like, like you said, like that first try kind of free form, don't judge yourself. And then I'd think, oh, like that part's going to, they're going to get mad at that, that, and that, and you got to clean it up. That's a big, yeah, that's a big thing that, Uh, you know, will hinder your creativity so much is like, yeah, Mm -hmm. I know. Like the, I don't know. I felt like there, I feel like there was a time when those rules were in a way like hard and fast. Mm -hmm. And what's nice about current day is that like they're broken a lot and for the better, you know, and it's, and it's, and it's not even at the point where you have to be like, well, you got to know him to break them. It's just like, you just do what you want. Yeah. Like, cause before for, for so long, it was like, you never stretch type. You don't use these certain typefaces. You, right. you know, you don't do this. You don't do that. Well, if you do it all in the right way that, you know, that kind of just mm-hmm. had creates this, a, a certain reaction, that's totally okay. Yeah, I mean, if, it's, if it's dope, it's dope, you know? Like exactly. You can't, you can't really yeah. say shit about it. That's, like, why I was so... Um, when I first discovered, like, David Carson and all that, like, ray gun oh. stuff, I was so, <laughs> like... I was like, oh, like, damn, like, th- someone's doing some crazy shit. Like, this is dope. Like, I like all the, you know, Swiss design, like, type stuff, too, but... Yeah. You, you, you only learn that for so long, and then, you, and then you see someone, like, say, like, fuck that, you know? And then it's it's really cool to... And it's like when, a pro doing it rather than just, you know, some DIY yeah. shit or whatever. So when, when Ray gun first came out, I was, in, I was in school for oh, okay. design and I picked up that first issue and I went, what is this? Yeah. Like, this is like, I just, it, it blew my mind. Yeah. And I would buy every issue and I got a subscription 
And then I put it together that he designed some of my favorite issues of trans world skateboarding. Mm. So he was an art, he was the art director and, you know, for trans world for years in the eighties. Mm-hmm. And I, I, those, those were such a huge, those were like a big part of me wanting to be a designer just because of yeah. the layouts were killer. And they were like, but they were like, it was like cut and paste and hand drawn and all these things and photocopied, but done in such a sophisticated way. Right. That it just, it, once I figured that out, I, it made perfect sense to me why Ray Gun hit me in such a way that nothing had before that. And mm-hmm. I, why I saved every single one of my trans world skateboarding magazines. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it was every like that, that feel, that was what I was trying to capture. When I looked at that, I went, okay, that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I, as much as I love Mueller Brockman, you know, Joseph Mueller and like, it's, you know, Swiss graphic designs. And I, when I discovered all that stuff, I was like, Oh, this is really cool. And there's like this right. Russian uh, designer, Ladislav Sutner, amazing, you know, like all this stuff. And I collected every sixties era uh, graphics annual at one point. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, but, but, the stuff that I would always go back to was this, you know, an album cover or, uh, you know, a, an issue of trans world or mm-hmm. Ray gun or whatever that is. And that always just it still resonates with me. I was actually, I've been lazy and I have a whole box of Ray gun magazines in my attic and I have That's to go dope. dig that, dig them out because yeah, they are. When you uh, awesome. when they were coming out, like uh, actually like new, and you were getting them, was it like a really popular thing among even like you know just people that didn't care about design, or was it kind of niche? Uh it was it was a it, was, it I think that it resonated with people who were into music because it was so music focused, right? But from a design standpoint, like I literally brought that first issue in, and every like we all gathered around and looked at it in one of my classes. Like yeah. what? And then like, you know, my teacher's reaction was, well, you can't read that. You can't do that. And I'm like, I went, this is doing something right. Yeah, if my yeah. teacher's having a reaction like that and saying that it's wrong. I'm mm-hmm. like, that's, I want to go there. Right. right? That's like, like when I, yeah. I first learned about it, my, one of my professors was telling us about, how they did the like wingdings article or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they were like, that's like ridiculous, you know, <laughs> or whatever, like don't yeah. do that. Oh, and yeah. I was like, that oh, shit's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. No, it was just like, just so many, like just repeating the same, like there's like a Cocteau twin spread where it's like the same image on either side and they're, like mm. everything mirrored and, you know, like, and there were parts of the article that were literally like covered with type and you couldn't read part of it. Like, but there was just something so like immediate about all that. Yeah. That, it, I don't know. Like it, there, th- when that, that era of design, like it spoke to me and it was so influential in such mm-hmm. a way. Um, it really, it helped kind of change the way I thought about it and also kind of justify certain things Sure. in the way it was approached. Like when he had done, um, before trans world or I think it was it before or after trans world, I can't remember. He had done surfer magazine and he'd done a right. magazine called beach culture which was never able to find copies of beach culture, but I've seen images from, but then, you know, at the same, and at the same time that was happening, Emma Gray, um, was, you know, type foundry was happening in the magazine, all that stuff too. So like mm-hmm. that was, um, really influential as well. Yeah. And then I, and then I met the guys that, um, started house industries. Yeah. That's dope. And, what, and what? that all, you know, that turned everything upside down for me. Right. I, I, I was curious how you kind of went from, so, cause I think a lot of people know who you are obviously through like 
something related to Grateful Dead, you know, whether it be your own stuff you were doing or the official things now with the yeah. Dead and Co and things. But how did you get from that? I've seen you relate it to like Greg Jinn talking about how he, he likes them and things, but yeah, how'd you yeah, go yeah, yeah. from, is yours like a similar thing? Like you went from, you liked all that punk stuff, but then you also got into that or how would, how'd that like transition so, happen? You know, it, there was a time, I guess like later eighties when I was in high school where like, it seemed like every, like the grateful that were huge, like had that big, like they were always been big, but like they had a big resurgence in right. the late eighties. So like, everybody was into the dead in my high school at that point i was one of five kids in a in a school of thousands mm -hmm. who were into hardcore okay. and punk and would go to shows and stuff and where were you going to school then uh outside of philadelphia in a, um okay a, 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 a town called uh well that town called, called lansdale and it's okay, a big cool. North, North Penn high school. It's a big, big school. Um, so like everybody was into the, everybody was into the dead and I, you know, so my immediate thing was to completely reject it. It was like, sure. Oh, that's the music that my, you know, friends, parents listen to, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, it was just around me constantly and I'd hear it all the time. And even like my real, like one of my best friends in high school, who was the guy who we skated every day. He got me to go to hardcore shows cause he was like sneaking out of the house at 13 years old mm -hmm. and doing that stuff. Um, he loved, he, but he, before everything, he got into all that stuff. He loved Grateful Dead and he still does. And okay. he would always be like, you really should just listen to this. You really should do this. And I was like, Egh. and it wasn't until like, you know, much later on that I was like, Hey, I really need to kind of give all of this stuff that I kind of maybe certain things that I kind of poo pooed along the mm -hmm. way, like another shot. And around that time I was, you know, listening to, you know, just kind of going through the records, going through the live sets, like starting to really listen to that stuff. I always yeah. knew that Greg Ginn from Black Flag was a big deadhead, mm -hmm. but I kind of dug into it a little bit more um, and looked and like read some articles and looked at all this other stuff and um, just thought that was funny and weird and what a great kind of, but then what, like but then, but then the more I looked at the way Black Flag lived, toured, recorded, handled everything Mm -hmm. and the way the dead did that at that time in the seventies and into the eighties. Um, I saw those parallels, which I thought were fascinating, yep. uh, which was really cool. And then I had as a, just kind of as a goof, I had found this picture of a guy wearing a, a t-shirt that said, we can discover the wonders of nature. And it had the two steelies and it had a pot leaf in the center. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be really funny if it just said, we can discover the wonders of black flag. And I made it, and I probably sat on it for two years. I think it was maybe at least if not yeah. longer. And then a friend of mine owed me a favor and said, Oh, you should print those shirts with that. You know, you should print that design that you, you showed me. And I was like, I was like, Oh, that's a good idea. And mm -hmm. I did. And then, you know, I gave them to a bunch of friends and they like, so then other friends there saw it and went like, how can I get one of those? And I, cause yeah. I showed it on my Instagram, people were just like, how can I get one? I was like, oh, I guess. I'll, and I just decided to sell off the rest of what I had, had made. And then I had enough money to make, and then people kept asking me for it. Yeah. So then I made more and then people asked for it again and they made more people asked for it again. <laughs> and, that, and it just sort of like, you know, no, no, no plan. Right. It just sort of happened. Um, and as sort of the best things kind of do, they just sort yeah. of happen in those situations right? you just sort of go like, you know, it just, it, 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 and I, I plan things like crazy. It, nothing ever works in the same way. Right. If it just, you, if it just sort of happens and you just kind of let it go and it just doesn't, you know? I mean, everyone wanting those shirts kind of further solidifies like there, there must be some kind of intersection between, you know, those communities and things. Cause like you're saying yeah. with the everything from, 
I would say the dead and black flag have traditionally some of the best, you know, artwork, merch, things like that. Absolutely. Greg's Absolutely. playing is like really melodic for being punk rock, you know, and kind of like jammy. So like, there's just a lot of things that can connect them. Yeah. As they kind of, you know, as they progressed, they got so jammy, which mm -hmm. I didn't understand as a 15 year old kid. Like I totally tried to listen to that later black flag stuff. And I was like, yeah, what is going on? Like I yeah. couldn't, it's longer than a I, minute. Like what? The yeah. Fuck? <laughs> I just couldn't figure it out. And like, you know, it, there's also that, like you look at sort of, you look at a band that's had multiple singers and really, you know, right. span like uh, almost like a 10 year period. And at that time that seemed like a long time. And you look at like from the first single to the last record and you look at how, how it changed so much. And it was just like, it was almost too much for me to like fully wrap my head around at that time because I, I needed like some, con I needed like a contextual Bible of some yeah. sort, like to for be real. like, here's what happened. And then this happened. And then these That's things, and confusing. this is why this, yeah, it was really confusing to me. I just, I couldn't. I couldn't figure it I mean, out. I remember when I first got into like that whole music, I, I obviously knew Keith Morris, Henry Rollins, like different eras of black flag, different people. But then yeah. it took me like a whole another year of getting into that music to realize like, Oh, circle jerks, the same fucking singer too. Like that makes so much yeah. more sense. Why they had like the same exact song basically. On yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's just, I know it's just, but it, you know, it's like, that's the thing. Like you have to really like go like, okay, I've got to like, sit, you know, and, and if you don't have the, if you don't want to take the time to sit down and really figure it out, you kind of go like, this is confusing. I'm on to the yeah. next thing, you know, like yeah. that's, you know, that's what all, that's even what now too, with the two different bands and shit, like it's, even oh, I know. More that's, confusing. yeah. And, and it's, and it's funny because the, the other, the flag one is infinitely better. Yeah. yeah I saw the <laughs> real one or whatever at this, like, yeah sabrosa fest thing and like dana point it was like this beer punk festival thing and like uh -huh. i didn't i was unaware of like the whole mike v thing like i knew who he was mm. as a skater i didn't know that yeah. that was that and they came out and i was like what the fuck like this is yeah. weird like even though it's the original guitarist and like leader it's like way yeah. different than the actual thing oh yeah know? yeah and i know mike is a big fan and mike is also a big like deadhead too which is actually really funny and cool Cause like yeah. he did some boards with like Jerry Garcia foundation or Jerry, uh, Jerry Garcia family and all uh -huh. that kind of stuff, which I was just like blown away by. So I loved, I loved that like other weird crossover, you right. know? Cause like, cause like Mike, I don't know Mike, but I, you know, like he was always one of those guys that I watched as a kid in met in skate magazines for like mm -hmm. the same age. You know, he, I knew he was like in the hardcore, like, I knew that like, you know, it, it always kind of followed his career. So it's really, it was really funny to see yeah, him like a, all of a sudden be in black flag, but also, but like B there's like this weird dead related adjacent right. crossover with him. It's like it's know, all which, planned or something, you know, but it's not like it, it's just random shit. It's, yeah. It's like the, I, I interviewed uh, Mark McKee and like, I was talking mm, to him about, yeah. uh, he did like the animal farm board, like the old mm -hmm. Mike V one. And like, yeah, yeah. I uh, when I, board. when I saw that, I always thought that was like one of the coolest things ever. And I was like, it makes sense. Like the cooler skaters would be more down with like the cooler graphics yeah, and yeah. shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that was a great. I mean, but as an aside, what a great board. Like yeah. that was such a, like in terms, in terms of skateboarding revolutionary shape and, and just every, like when that board came out, I ended up grab it, broke a board and like right off, right before I went off to college, my freshman year of college, and somebody had that board and it was still in decent shape and they gave it to me just to kind of put together and, and, oh, and cruise around on. I was just like, I was like, this is incredible. Like it just kind of like that really kind of changed. Yeah. It's crazy how lot. the shape used to not be standardized. Like, you know, this brand's board would be infinitely better because of the shape. And like, I even oh, yeah. know there's this company now like uh, welcome skateboards mm -hmm. and I really like their decks cause they, kind of have they're they're very like some of them will have like a skinnier like little point at the end they're not all exact that popsicle shape yeah. and it's kind of cool like bringing back that 
it gives you a little more character, you know, and kind of flavor. Well, to like... it, I, I think because, yeah, because everybody's different, right? Yeah. Like everybody, everybody rides a board differently. Everybody wants a different, you know, like, a, you know, likes a different width or, th- you know, I, I mean, we would, I, I would do that. Like when I was a kid, like since everything was so different in the eighties, like it was like, let me ride your board real quick. Like I, I, I need a new board soon. Like I want to see if I yeah, like yeah. this. Try I like it this. Out. And, or you, and then you'd find something like, I never thought I'd be that guy. Cause I always like to have some like variety, yeah, but like yeah. I would, you would find something that you loved and I would, I bought the same like Alva board, like five times yeah because it was like my favorite thing just bought it over and over and over again and then like when there was like the later era uh vision gone sports i would buy those over and over and over again because i just loved that you know they were great shape and great concave and absolutely love that so yeah yeah, I, i would do that repeat thing over and over and over. I was like, oh, it's so boring. Like I want a different graphic, a different shape. But yeah. I was like, no, 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 wait. Like once I realized like how much I love a certain board, I would buy it over and over again. Um, I wanted to ask, I kind of went off on a, like we had this little tangent, but a little oh, bit. I'm, I'm the king I, of tangents. I'm sorry. I obviously like the, all somewhere. this Grateful Dead stuff isn't like a quick gloss over. I feel like that's one of the <laughs> main things I wanted to ask you about. So <laughs> sure, I want to get sure. back on it a little bit because. Absolutely, um, please. How did you go from, you know, because obviously they've always fostered this like bootleg culture and all this stuff. Sure. And it's not like, it's not crazy to like bootleg, you know, steely head or, or anything like that. But mm-hmm. how do you go from doing that and the wonders of Black Flag stuff to to now having like the always play dead and then doing proper, like proper stuff, you know? The, the simplified story is I was making the shirts for a couple of years John Mayer saw them, was like, hey, how can I get one? Oh, okay. And I was like, well, I can send you them. Um, you know, I have a couple floating around here or I'll hold one for you the next release. And I said, you know, uh, you're not going to, no one's going to sue me, are they? He was like, promise, no one's going <laughs> to sue you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had, we were, were just about ready to buy tickets to go see Dead & Company in Camden. And okay. I was like, and I was like, oh, we're, you know, we're thinking about coming and, you know, we're going to come see you like your friend. You were he was a fan like, already like, at the time? Yeah. And he, yeah. And he was like, well, what if like, how about like, what's how how's a fair trade? Like you bring me shirts, I'll give you tickets. And I went, that sounds like yeah. oh, a good yeah. trade. I said, as long as security isn't going to tackle me when I walk right. in the building. Um, so yeah, like I ended up, you know, grabbing a bunch of stuff for him Ended up meeting him gave him shirts he was super excited from there we just kind of kept always talking and then like i think it was like the next tour came around he was kind of like oh you know it would be great if you could help me out with some stuff i was like absolutely so like one then i he sort of like started working me you know everything from like hey i have a single can you help me with the single to hey can you lay out you want to work with me on this next record that yeah. was like 27. So like it just sort of ended up being this very natural, really like we kept in touch. We talked this very natural relationship, um, mm-hmm. working relationship and it worked out well. Like we just kind of, we work nicely together. It's great. It's so much, it's a lot of fun. Um, there's not a million other people involved. It's just kind of us. That's dope. Um, and then from there, I eventually got to the point where, um, GDP, which Grateful Dead Productions kind of said like, Hey, you think maybe you just want to make this legal and you know, yeah. then you can kind of go and do, we'd love to have you as part of the team. Just let's make it official and you can kind of go and do, um, essentially not whatever you want. Things have to get approved, but you can sort of make stuff and we'll, we'll make it official. Right. And so that's, that's like a win-win kind of, you know? Yeah, it was, no, it was great. It was great. Um, you know, because then I didn't feel like I was always looking over my shoulder, like, and I didn't feel, you know, cause I started to feel like bad, like, Oh, I'm making these shirts. And then I'm also working for the band. And I mean, they didn't, re- they didn't really, they care, but they don't really care. It's not like, yeah. Oh my, like they weren't freaking out about it. They were just like, it would be nice if right. you were, we were all kind of on the same team and things were legit. It's and the I best went, band for it great. to be that. That's their whole history is that stuff, you know? Like, uh, yeah. 
that I don't think you would the shit would fly if you're just doing this for like some other random band like the Stones or something, you know? <laughs> Not at all. No, no. And and the the thing is though, like, what's so cool about that whole bootleg world is is that especially with the dead, it it just fostered so much creativity. There's yep. so much cool stuff out there and it's funny and it's fun and it's like just everything about it is feels good. Has it like, it just feels like it's not overthought. It's got little, you know, subtle little pop culture references of the time in it. When you look at it, it's all those kind of like they were doing logo ripoffs. They were doing all that kind of stuff, which was just, Mm -hmm. you know, which goes back to skateboarding, which also kind of, and also those little pop culture pulls that have a little bit of kind of punk in it too. Do you think so, that's why they kind of said like, let's not even try to like shut this down. Cause it created such a community and like younger people getting into they, it and like stuff like that. They know, they know yeah. that that whole bootleg community is one of the major re- reasons for their relevance yeah, and their ability to stay relevant. Mm-hmm. You know, like well, even with the online ceramics shit, like I know people that have that, they don't know any Grateful Dead songs, you know, like, no. there's no way. <laughs> I mean, they, those guys, they've done such an amazing job of just sort of making it, it's a brand, you know, making it a brand Yeah, yeah. and making it, um, you know, and, and, and at the same time helping, you know, there's a certain, like, I mean, think about all of the other brands bigger brands and other people that have been influenced by elijah and alex like Mm -hmm. it's it's completely insane it is really that's like like the standard for shirts now is like all over crazy you know like like graphics like that yeah like they kind of they they really they took all of this stuff that was out there and kind of made their very their own unique vision of it mm-hmm. and it has influenced a ton of people yeah it's you know? even like uh i think that another reason all that stuff works too is like the same way i thought the stuff they did with um a24 worked well is because it's the same type of people that are like we know about this you know like this is some cool thing that we like and like that's the best kind of brand you could have is something that people think is like they're in this like club, you know, for lack of a better word, not just something that's everywhere. Yes. Yeah. You want to participate and you want to, um, you know, you just want to, you want to be, a, you want to be a part of it and associated with it. Yeah. That's, you know, when, when, you, when, when all of those pieces come together, um, it makes for something, you know, special and very, mm-hmm successful so the john Um, mayer stuff and the dead then basically because like those are two of your i'd say like claim to fames or whatever you want to call it so like those two things it seems like almost they're like kind of parallel to each other like me having john mayer doing his stuff kind of happened because he wanted you to give him that grateful dead stuff i didn't know that it'd be that connected you know because they're two different things kind of absolutely yeah yeah it just so it just so happened i think actually I think I ended up working with him on his solo stuff before I even did any official dead and company okay. stuff. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. and then it just sort of flowed one right into the, into the other. And then did, it's been um, consistent for the past couple of, you know, past quite a few years, which is yeah. great. It seems like, I mean, uh, do you, uh, like you obviously said you have your own personal kind of practice and things and other things you do, but is the bulk of your, you know, year dedicated to that kind of stuff or is it kind of come and go? The bulk of my time is dedicated, I think to, to freelance stuff, everything from like, you know, K2 and working with John and working with mm-hmm. Den company and working with, um, other, you know, other clients. And okay. then, you know, and then I kind of do the, you know, the, I like the, you know, the dead, the play dead stuff sort of night is a nice sort of break up yeah, yeah, and yeah. sort of idea dump, uh, in the same way that my, you know, the, any of the wonders of black flag stuff 
is, right. you know, like sort of just when I feel like, you know, I'm not on a schedule. It's just sort of when I feel like it, which I tend to work best that way. I'm not a, I'm not a good seasonal, like, you know, um, and also there really aren't seasons anymore when it comes to right uh, clothing releases. It's like they, they, you know, the internet dictated that, you know, everything go on every, a two week release thing. You look at Supreme, yeah. you look at any other brand, like it's just like release, release, release. It used to be like, here's our fall offering. Here's our, here's, here's winter, here's right. spring, summer, you know, and then that was kind of it. And you wouldn't see anything new for six weeks. Now it's like every two weeks, boom, 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 boom. Um, it, uh, it's nice to have that kind of, you know, like you almost like security, I guess is the word a little bit too. Like even if you don't have all hella clients or you don't want to work on a lot of that own stuff, you know, like you can get paid from doing the Grateful Dead shit. And whatnot. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, that's, that's, that's nice. It's, that's an, uh, a fortunate side effect. Mm hmm. You know, I try to, I mean, I, I, I pretty much live on a freelance work. Yeah. You know, those things are, those things are, are, are a nice to have and a good, it's a good side effect of, mm -hmm. um, having those things. It's, you know, it, it's good to have, um, I've realized, and I've realized this over the years, it's nice, like the kind of built to have these other avenues other than you're only relying solely on client work. Right. Because that goes in. I mean, everyone learned that with waves. COVID, you know, you need multiple yeah. income streams or else the one guy or the man or whatever could take your job away and then ah. you're fucked. You know? Yep. Absolutely. So that's like, you know, I have the screen printing business, which is a little bit. And then, you know, every once in a while, like if we're releasing play dead stuff, like if, if, if that stuff goes okay, then, Hey, we can pay ourselves a couple bucks. Um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and yeah, it, it's, it, it's a good, it's a good thing to have, especially when you're like a functioning adult with a family. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's good to have a lot of, you know, 10% here, 20% there rather than it all being in one thing. Exactly. Yeah. What, um, one of the things that, cause I really like, I didn't know originally you did like what I'm trying to say, I knew you and I knew some of your stuff from the dead stuff and just a lot of the kind of like, I like all that punk graphics kind of things. And, but then I saw the sob story stuff or sob rock, sorry. And then like, oh, yeah. I was like, this is dope. Cause that kind of had a resurgence a little bit, that eighties advertising kind of look. And mm -hmm. you wouldn't expect you to have done that, you know, just at face value, looking at a lot of the styles you work in. So what, how did that concept kind of get conjured that up? Was, that was like John and I just kind of going back and forth and like, oh, check this out, check this out, check this out. And he had, mm -hmm. he had Columbia make like a P, like a, like a PDF of all their old adver oh, record advertising okay. for everything from like Aerosmith and Billy Joel and all stuff. And we went through this. That stuff was probably so dope. Oh, it was great. And it was like, what we did was we went through and looked at the whole PDF of all multiple, all these pages of all these great old, um, yeah. record ads. And what I did was like, I made a, um, I just made a little document and we, and identified every typeface mm -hmm. in that whole thing. So I was just like, you know, this is Helvetica and then this is accidents or this is this and this is, you know, whatever condensed and this is Gil Sands. And, you know, like we just sort of went through and did the whole thing. And then we kind of were like, okay, what feels really good? So we started picking out certain typefaces and she was sending me certain things like, well, what about this? I'm like, that's awesome. Like, let me find out. I think I'm like, I think I know what that font is. I don't know what that one is. And we went yeah. through. And so that, and it was just, it was, a, it's a very, it was a, it was great. It was actually a very organic process in terms of how everything went. And then like, once we had photography, like he did this whole photo shoot. And then once it came back, I went, oh, okay, here we go. And yeah. then we just started plugging in what felt right with the photo and then manipulating. He was like, well, what if we did this? And like, like he'd send me back some of the sketches that I would do and he would draw on parts of them and be like, all right, let me try this. Let me try this. And like, it's a, it's a nice, he's a great art director mm -hmm. and he really knows what he wants, 
which is so helpful because there's plenty of people who are just like, I don't know, you know, yeah. and they can't articulate why they don't like something or they can't articulate it enough to get to the next level where he can, he knows exactly what to say to get to that point where it's like, yeah, bingo, this is it. And it's um, nice to know what you want. And it also happened to be cool, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so like, it, you know, it, it was just, it was really a nice natural evolution of mm. typography photography you know us going back and forth and sharing things and being like well, what if it did this and what if it looked like this and what if it felt like this to get to this whole place that you know felt really good and yeah it was a a lot of fun and it a lot makes of sense work. how like uh <laughs> There was something about that campaign that felt very true to that, the actual things it was referencing. And it makes sense because like you had the straight from the source, you know, like research and, yeah. and reference and things to make it like spot on. And it's funny that you talk about all the fonts because that makes sense why I've seen the inter interview of like John Mayer talking about fonts and shit with like Kerwin yeah. Frost. And I was he like, loves fonts. why does he and care he about fonts? But it makes maybe you, yeah. uh, you got you're part of that. Uh, part of that problem to yeah no it's great i mean he just he, he loves it and i love that he like it's so cool that he just knows about that stuff too which is you know it was really like when he first when we first started talking about stuff it's like is this so and so i'm like yeah like that is that fun like like how do you how do you know that you know yeah. like it's just yeah so he he you know he loves to look at certain references and 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 and, and it was and it was just, we had a really nice base to build that whole campaign off of. Yeah. Um, that's and without it so being, dope. thanks. And, but, and, but without it being like, you're looking at it and it just like, so like, cause it, it, we didn't want it so over the top that it was kitschy, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you look at it and you know that it's, there's a there's a reference point there of a of a right. time period, um, but without it being like to the point where you're just like, oh, like it, where you cram like every possible '80s reference into one thing, you know, and right. or like it like where it's just like that at that point you kind of go like, it's a it's a little too. It's like a sophisticated saccharine. approach, I think, to referencing that because even if you look at the album cover, it's not as like on the nose as some of the font choices and things in the like more advertising things those ones like speak yeah. a lot more to that age so i feel like i mean you 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 did it you know you do what you're doing with the with the whole thing i mean out. i i love that era of stuff and i love i love referencing mm -hmm. older things in a cleaner way i don't do it a ton but i've done it in but and when you and when you when you can do it and there's there's a lot of nuance there to kerning and and yep. and letting and how everything's spaced and, and how much air you give the typography and all that kind of stuff, right? Which is um, which is really important because there's a lot of ways that you could just set that type and whatever settings you're on, you can just let it go and your current right. is off and it's like you're failing. Like Fedora can look like shit, you know, <laughs> if oh, yeah. it's like all oh, spaced yeah. out and oh, not dude. tight. Absolutely absolutely yeah. like that yeah there's a lot yeah there's a lot of stuff that can be done um and just be like what the heck but then yeah. but if you yeah if you really you really have to you know massage it to a point where you kind of like it it looks you know period correct right why yeah. do you think that is such like a big trend right now i've noticed it from around the time a little bit before around the time you guys released that all the way yeah. up until like now where every brand is doing like the Apple type of kind of advertising. I, yeah. It's, it's fascinating to me. I think, um, I've seen it with, uh, which is really cool with like that, with the brand Amelie Andor. Yeah. Um, with all the new done, balance shit. Yeah. They, yeah all their new balance stuff is there. It's really cool. And they did a thing with, they did a Porsche and all that kind of stuff. Just, you know, I, it, everything goes in in these waves and yeah. i thought at this point i mean now we're hitting some of that early 2000 stuff now too look we're at that 20 year mark right everything mm -hmm. happens in these 20 year 
yep. spark things where it's like 20 years, okay, we're going to look back and we're going to do X, Y, and Z. And we're yeah, like everything was that. Y2K this past, like yeah. last year. It's kind of on the way out, it, I think, but exactly. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's always interesting because I've seen like the 80s stuff come in multiple ways. Like you saw it even like you saw the early 80s in the, in the earlier 90s with, um, you know, right around the time, like when, you know, Beastie Boys Check Your Head was released, it was like, you know, late 70s, early 80s, Pumas, Shell Toes, um, yeah. T-shirts, Graffiti, like Ringer like Tees, like all, shoes. <laughs> yeah, all that kind of stuff. I saw that kind of wave of things happen. And I was like, I was on that with yeah. that. Like I was like, that was like, cause it just early twenties, it harkened back to, you know, 10, eight, nine, 10 years old, mm -hmm. perfect timing kind of thing. Um, so, you know, I mean, it, it, everything has, like, I think, you know, we had a little bit of that. I think when, when the whole dead thing bubbled up again, we had a little bit of that sort of seventies kind of thing. Yeah. I remember being a kid in the late eighties and the seventies were such a huge thing. Again, tie dye was really big. Right. That's when the dead was like exploded again. Um, there was a lot of seventies, you know, references at that time. Um, it's, I, I, I am fascinated to watch all that, what that cycle is and how it, mm -hmm. And how it goes, and it's interesting that um, there was a lot, like all this sort of like sort of mid to late eighties resurgence again. Yeah, I thought, you know, I didn't think I'd see it again, but here we are. You have an advantage, you know. Maybe that helps why you did such a good job on it is knowing how it actually kind of conspired in the original. Um, are you are you time? calling me old? No, nah, I'm just uh, assuming that you, you, were, you were maybe around at the time. <laughs> I was. I was. I was. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm just kidding. It's just a lot easier, you know, than me doing it. Like, I, <laughs> there, there has to be something just like some unmeasurable thing that you just, you have a more, you know, feeling for. It's the same way, like, I'm sure I'm going to be able to reference like all this weird 2010 shit eventually, you know? Uh, and, absolutely. And it's, it's, and when you, and when you look back on, like when you do do that, you're going to go, Oh no, here we are. <laughs> yeah. That's scary. Like that, the first time that happened, I went, Oh, wait, what? Like, yeah, yeah it kind of, it kind of freaked me out. Like I, mean, I, was I like, even I, know I, uh, kids that are like, it, it's not as much of the 20 year thing, but yeah. um, so I'm 24. I have ki uh, see kids online that are about 16 to 19 that are like yeah. romanticizing. Like, I wish I was or, like my space and shit like that oh, looks so cool. Or like, I wish I was around on like original YouTube or whatever. Well, and I'm like, fuck. It, yeah. That's, that's why I held, I held on to so much stuff. And it's funny because I have, ki I have two kids and um, my oldest is 20 mm. and my youngest is 17. And, my oldest, like he went through a thing where he was like, Oh man, I'd really like whatever. And I, and I'd literally dig through my stuff. Battery and died, but you're good. Keep, oh, okay. keep going. I'll switch um, it out. I, I, I dig, I dug through my, like I, I dig through all, like all my old t-shirts and clothes and stuff and be like, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? He's like, this is great. Like yeah. you know, during those times when, when he has like this thing where he goes like, like he kind of has like a, where he sort of sees what's happening in the world, like in a little retro moment, I go, mm -hmm. well, here, Here's some here's stuff I saved. And that like, real oh, vintage, cool. yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's dope. That, that's like a that's cool that you're able to do that too because I even already look back on not all the things I got rid of where I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm like, fuck, like I would have I had all the like old hip hop shirts and shit that everyone wanted like the past two years, you know, and now you got to pay like $100 oh, yeah. to re-get them. And shit. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. crazy. That's why I was just like, oh, you want the like you know, here's this hardcore shirt. Here's this stuff. Yeah. Like when he, when he first discovered Supreme, I was like, Oh, okay, hold on. And, and at that point I had sold a ton of t-shirts, but I right. held on to a couple of things and I held on to sweatshirts and a bunch of other Some stuff. Box logos and, just, and shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just pulled out a stack of stuff and was like, here you go. And he was like, probably blew his little mind. Yeah. He's like, where, <laughs> he's like, where did you get this? I go, look at the pictures of you when you're a baby. Yeah. What am I wearing? And I'm like, he's like, he's like, 
oh my god dad this is great but yeah here you go take it that's you know it's got yeah. or like certain too. sneakers too like when certain people have like they've re-released like when nike's like re-released the certain humaras or this or that i'm like i'm like oh yeah i have those here yeah go into the bin and just be like here you go or like the you ones know? and and dunks and oh, things yeah. like oh yeah yeah, yeah. Like, i pile it i have a pile of old like late 90s early 2000 dunks that's and, dope. and i was just like do you want any of these he was like and at that point at this point he was kind of like yeah like he was kind of like whatever about it because he was really into like new balance and whatever else and so yeah. like he wasn't didn't really care but there was a time like when he was like i really want a pair of force ones i was like here's five different pairs to choose from well i've noticed like, right now I'm, i've always been into the kind of new balancey like trainer kind of style like shoes that's like mm -hmm. what's the not the i was gonna say the meta or whatever but like that's yeah. the that's the thing right now it's that and like even dunks had a crazy resurgence and like yeah i, never I was really happy that about. new balance would be the hypest brand you know around right I, now like, i mean crazy. i remember when every you know early late 90s everybody was wearing the um well which uh, i can't remember what style that was it was like I think it was like a five. It was like a five series New Balance. The five, <laughs> I think it was a five seventy four. Right. Everybody yeah. was wearing the five seventy four for for like in that, at that time, which were which I loved and I wore tons of. Yeah. Um, and right then, now the five fifty is like hella like what the what the stuff you were talking about the yeah. uh, I don't know how to say it, but the Amy Leon. I mean, or whatever. Yeah. They they like they got that shoe and made it cool again. You know. That was really smart of them to do um because yeah like it it's was a dope shoe too so it works it's a great yeah it's a great shoe like i've been I, you know i wear a lot of, like the there's like a so it's like the version one or two of the uh 992 mm -hmm. which i like a lot i wear those um and then i was really happy that the dunks came back just because i wore like the first first edition sbs yeah and all that other stuff I loved all that stuff. So I remember when I was in high school, all the BMX kids only wore the SBs. Like that was like really? that kind of stuff. Yeah. For some reason, That's I feel like skaters had like, you know, Lakai and brands like that that were coming out. And then I feel yeah. like that was their way to like differentiate themselves, you know? That's a little funny. bit. That's really interesting. Yeah. No, I, um, loved all, I love all that stuff. I've always paid attention to that stuff too. Like, yeah. Um, and I worked in retail for, for years. So it kind oh, of okay. forced me. To pay gotta attention know, to yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I was, you know, in house it, for a bunch of different companies like uh, Urban Outfitters and uh, Anthropology oh, okay. and Echo Unlimited um, and stuff like that for, for, for years. So, you mm -hmm. know, I had no other choice other than we would go on shopping trips and, yeah, you know, and look at stuff. And I, I've always been fascinated. That's why I like, I make t shirts and have all these other things because it's like I've always. It's just right. sort of an extension of, of all that stuff that I've always been. That's what really, you know, that's where I saw like the design interest go. Like I was really, you know, when that first, first wave of streetwear, which was like, you could call it that like late eighties, early nineties. Like and shit. First Stussy. Yeah. And then, and then it was like, you know, like fresh jive and gypsies and thieves and fucked and all those brands like yep. that. I, you know, that all that stuff was like, I was like, oh, this is super cool. Oh, these guys are designers that are doing this stuff, but they're not necessarily like graphic, like stodgy, like graphic designers. They're doing right. fun stuff. Like, this is what I want to do. That's what really like was one another one of those things that was another push into mm -hmm. that arena. And I thought the T and, and the T-shirt has always been a. That's funny a how great like meeting. you were really on the ground floor of like all the shit that is like for lack of a better word cool you know like the kind of coolest things that people want and it's uh, funny to think of your 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 side bead like what the hell like how do you know about this shit or whatever like he <laughs> he grabbed all my old x large stuff which i think is really cool oh, yeah. um which he thought was great like he has an old x large store shirt that just has that it just says like there's like the logo on the front and the back it just says x large store like whatever vermont avenue like los yeah, angeles it's like, dope. phone number it's just really dead simple but um it's a great uh, it's a great sort of little time capsule piece from, I never from thought the, what I've always been fascinated about, cause I'm a big fan of it is 
I never thought I'd see this much of a, a resurgence or influx of all the workwear shit. Cause I always wore Dickies oh. and Carhartt and I never thought it but would be like this, you know, that went hand in hand with that, all that early nineties stuff. Right. Yeah, like okay. at the same time, at the same time I was like, you know, wearing all the Stussy and, 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 and all fresh jive and all that kind of stuff. They, Stussy was doing, taking Carhartt jackets and embroidering okay, on the front yeah. of them and selling them at, in their spring street store. They were selling them to, they were like uh, the accounts that sold them near me outside of Philadelphia. They ha had all that stuff too. Mm -hmm. Um, which I thought were really cool. But at the same time, I always went like, well, I'll just buy the Carhartt jacket for half the price. Yeah. You know, but so I always wore like car, you know, painter pant, like, you know, the denim yeah, sort it's of the like best. work pant. And, and, and I still have like a nice, like hooded, you know, zip up hooded one. that's like a thermal line and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. I, I loved all that stuff. And you the, see it, all the it, memes. It's, it's like, uh, everyone wants to wear Carhartt till it's time to do Carhartt shit. <laughs> exactly. You know, you gotta actually work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like it's really, and it's like, it's probably like it's third big round yeah of stuff cuz like i think what helped push it back to its original state was work in progress yeah they were smart like, to do that they saw like it happening late, anyway late 90s i went i remember i mean like basically took a pilgrimage to that first carhartt work in progress store in london in like 99 my wife and i See, I didn't even know it was vacation. that old because it yeah. kind of got bigger lately, you know? The first store was in Covent Garden in London. Wow. And I remember going and like being like, I need to get something here. And I ended up with these like, they didn't have like the hammer loops and stuff like that, but they were like the base of like basically a, um, the regular Carhartt like work pant, mm -hmm. um, but in green, olive green, thin whale corduroy. That's dope. And I wore those things every day <laughs> for like years. I wore the crap out of those things. Yeah. I loved them. Yeah. And they were like, it, to me, they were a fortune. I think they were like 70 bucks. And yeah, I was even like, then? Yeah. Oh, I was like, it was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Like, it was just like, oh, like I'm, I'm doing like the, I'm doing the calculations of like the dollars to pound in my head. Yeah. I'm like, I can't believe I'm going to buy these. Like, oh my God. Oh, um, yeah, no, I loved all that stuff. And I think that was like, you know, that it was like that thing where it like pushed it into that world and they, you know, did a mm -hmm. nice job with it. And then, but then, and th but then the natural progression was back to its right. original. It's the um, same way Dickies has form. the skateboarding shit now. Cause when I was in high school, yeah. you, if you skated, oh, yeah. you wore, you wore the, you wore Dickies. Like it wasn't oh, yeah. uh, even a question, you know, you, oh, yeah. you usually old schools and Dickies, you know, it was kind of the skater fit uh, or whatever. Absolutely. That's like, yeah, they were huge. I mean, you know, working for years for a long time for urban outfitters, I watched all that, you know, they were, they were buying, they were buying Dickies and they were washing them down Yeah, yeah. and, and selling them. And then they were, and same with Carhartt stuff. They were taking out all the unwashed Carhartt denim and all that stuff and like washing it way down, softening it up, you know, uh, fading it a little bit. And then, and they, and they, and they just, sold tons of that stuff i know when stuff goes yeah. to urban outfitters i'm like all right it's got a few more months you know yeah <laughs> it's on its way out again for a while <laughs> i think that's it's kind of like you they they can't i know they want to be on the trends but you can't help but people you know you're not ever going to well, solve the problem of people being like oh now it's like there yeah, you know of course i you know it's funny too because everybody that works there like you know we would be on stuff pretty early like yeah. in in the office you know and then eventually like a buyer would see what you're wearing and go what hey where'd you get those what's that like what's you know and it would sort of that was the evolution yep. of maybe we should buy these for the store okay let's see if it has legs let's test it out in a couple of, let's do and then like you you watch it kind of watch the yeah. evolution happen real time like you I know, just remember just laughing like, going into our, one of those stores was days and just right in the front. It's like Tame Impala records and like Dickies. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> you know, they, yeah, they're onto I mean, it. They're onto I, it. The, the, um, trend life cycle is, has always been fascinating to me to like mm -hmm. kind of where it starts to where it ends to where 
there's that break and you'll see it pop back up again. Yeah. Um, with design, with clothes, with whatever it is. Um, I, you know, I love to see that. And I, yeah. love, I love following. I, there was a time, my time at urban where I was working with their men's team and doing, um, and building their trend forecasting books mm, and, okay. and, go, and going on shopping trips and doing all that kind of stuff too, just because it was just, I was, it's kind of a cool, like, that's a cool, like day to day work thing to do. It was great. It was great. Um, and it was a lot of fun. And, you know, I'd go, I'd go to like Rose Bowl flea market with some of the guys on the men's team and they'd see certain yeah. things and they'd be like, and they were like a little bit younger and they'd be like, yo, what's this? And I'd be like, oh, those are like, you know, these kind of shoes. And they're from this time to this time. Like, like they didn't know what stuff was. Like, I'm just a nerd about right. all kind, you know. And so I would like help decipher that certain flea things that they insane, didn't know, dude. didn't know Gosh. what, you know, what certain things were. So it was, yeah, it was always yeah. really. You really go there fun. at like 6 a.m. There's already like 10,000 people there. <laughs> It's so much fun though. I can't, I, yeah. I, 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 I was just thinking about it the other day and I, I haven't, I was there a couple of, it was a couple of years ago. Maybe it was like mm-hmm. 2019, 18, somewhere around there. I yeah. was in, we were in Santa Barbara for something. And then I drove back to drove when I was driving through LA, I coming from Santa Barbara, it was early in the morning and I stopped and it just so happened to line up with the Rose Bowl. And I just sort of, yeah did like a loop and spent a couple hours there and it was it's a good yeah, time good timing because i think it's only like once a month now or whatever so yeah i think i think yeah. that's something like that yeah it's like what it's like first sunday yeah something like that yeah yeah there's a Love. bunch of that cool stuff now like i go to one los Feliz, the one on Fairfax one. is pretty yep. cool too and all that stuff but that's um awesome. one last thing i uh, uh, the, yeah. the last thing i wanted to ask you because um just for time's sake, but because we uh, really great, digressed. Great chatting with you. I, that's how I know it was a good. Uh, when I can go off like that, I feel like it's it, it, it's a good one, you know. But um, one of the things I wanted to ask just for for some other people because I know a lot of people that listen to this and a lot of people I talk to. The main type of thing they want to do is like designing within music, albums, yeah. T-shirts, and whatnot. Like it's just a thing I think people my age gravitate towards. And um, what is there any kind of advice you would give to out to after having so much experience in that field that you can Absolutely. leave us with? Yes, um, you know, if there if you're really into a certain kind of music i would say make friends with people who are involved in that world that's kind of a for a first big step mm-hmm. you know i i lucked out and you know befriending record label owners who really at the time needed some help and they were kind of exploding with bands yep. and it was just it was just a, a good a really good luck timing thing um self-initiated projects too to kind of show what you can do rather than anybody telling you what to do is a huge 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 part of all of that as well just making up make doing what you feel comfortable doing what makes you happy and then putting it out there in the world and if people respond to that um that's like the best thing yeah and and then hopefully at some point you know somebody will notice i you know i've seen a bunch of people go from bootlegging i'm not suggesting this <laughs> but yeah. if you look historically disclaimer, <laughs> disclaimer <laughs> not my thing not my thing but you know um if you know if you take a page out of my book if you take a page out of online ceramics book um you know uh you you, you make up your own graphics for a band that you love um there's a possibility they could come knocking in and in, in a very positive way if they're flat, mm-hmm. they're flattered. Um, I think that's really helpful. I think that the, the big, the big piece of the puzzle is the self initiated projects and just sort of putting things out there that you love to do so that people will come to you for what you do. Because I yeah. think any designer out there will, ne- will, I think they'll all, everybody will agree. I think you'll agree that 
you never really totally want to be just like a set of hands. Like, Hey, I like this. Hey, I like this. These right. were done by other people. I want you to do this and, and Oh no, no, no. And then move that and do it. Right. Don't when be it comes order to order like, taker. Exactly. Because that can sort of be any capable person. Mm-hmm. But if you have a certain thing that you do that you love to do and it's, and it starts to resonate with other people. Um, I feel that that's really important. And then people will come will just, I think naturally people will gravitate towards you to help them achieve what you've done for yourself, but mm-hmm. for them. So. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like, I think I was saying something like that right in the very beginning when we got on the call. So I think that's a yeah. perfect kind of, full circle. And I completely agree. I always advocate for, even if you don't have clients, just make shit, you know, always be, keep it moving, you know, and just do what you want to do. Making shit regularly is huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge because that's the only way you're going to get better. That's the only way you're going to see what works and what doesn't. That's the only way you're going to make those mistakes. It's better to make those mistakes for yourself than for somebody else. Yeah. When you do stuff and you go, you're kicking yourself going, Oh, why did I do that? When you see it done and maybe mm-hmm. nobody else notices those things, but you will. And that, right. that those are the things that keep you up at night. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I For sure. still keep me up at night. So wake <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> why did I do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. but again, thank you, uh, Jeremy. It was great sure. talking with you. I appreciate yeah. you coming on and you guys can check out, Jeremy's stuff on Instagram, Dean's Nuts, a uh, great handle too. <laughs> and, uh, we online. didn't even get in. We didn't even get into that. We didn't even get into like where that came from, and we don't have to. I think it's been explained. <laughs> cool. <sighs> but um, again, thank you, and we'll see you guys next time, everyone. Right. Thanks, I appreciate it. See you.